Hello. Today we're going to discuss a little bit of everything. Not going to hold you. It's kind of just one of those talk videos where we're just going to sit down and have a chat and go over the game. I feel like right now there's kind of a divide between two communities. There's like the PVEers, like the PVXers, whatever. The people that kind of dabble in everything and mainly focus on PVE content. And then we have the PVPers that only see the game from like a one dimensional view. The PVPers are usually the ones that are end game gear and they don't really do much else because they don't have a reason to. Like, for example, me, I'm 660 gear score. My next gain is like 50 billion or some shit, you know? Like, there's not really much else for me to do other than just play the game and gradually collect silver and then buy something later down the line. Like, the max gear that we can get on console is, I think, 680. So, like, I'm 20 gear score off from that. And in order to reach that, I have to literally buy accessories that are going to cost me upwards of, you know... 40 billion silver 60 billion silver etc yeah i'm clearly not by any means gonna rush that by for any like reason it's just too much i'll just be casually playing the game and whenever i get there is when i get there but that is kind of the mindset of pvpers whenever they get to their point in gear where they're comfortable they usually don't care about other aspects they usually just play rbf or they go into uh you know just gvgs uh, node wars sieges etc and they kind of just goof around and just play the game in that regard but it's usually one dimensional and they don't think about anything else and then the pveers aka the grinders they usually also life skills by the way but they usually also think about the game from a one dimensional perspective because they don't participate in pvp they don't really see it as an important thing and both sides seem to forget that these things kind of coexist with each other to some degree. Just because all you do is grind, that don't mean you're safe. <laughs> that don't mean you're safe. You can be grinding casually, not be in any guild whatsoever, but if I want your grind spot and I don't care if I go red, I'ma just kill you over and over and over again. I've never done that. I'm just saying like the option is there, like they coexist with each other. Now we need to talk about content here because there's a big argument right now or just a, a debate and conversation that's happening in the in, in the background, you know, behind the scenes. There's a conversation happening. What is more important, PVE? Or PvP. In order to do that, let's take a look as to what these two sides have in terms of content. Let's start with PvP, okay? PvP is very simple. We have a few forms of it. We've got Node Wars, we've got Siege, we've got RBF, and we've got uh, GVGs. That is it. Now, only two of those yield a reward and the rest irrelevant. Siege is the one that yields the end game reward. If you happen to take a territory and you win, you get 2 billion silver as a reward. And it doesn't matter which castle you take. If you take Calpheon, Medaya, or Valencia, because on console, those are the only ones we have available. Balanos and Serendia have been removed for months now, and I have no idea when they're going to come back. But the result is still the same. What, no matter what castle you take, it is going to be 2 billion as your reward for coming in first place. And if you place in, you know, second and third, you get like 700 mil and like 250 mil or something. I can't remember what exactly the numbers are. But you get another, you know, like placement uh, prize. So for participating, you get like 150 mil. And then once you start placing higher and higher, you start getting more money gradually up to two bill if you win. Now, every player gets paid that, by the way. So if you have a hundred man roster, a hundred people are going to have a two bill payday, which is very, very nice and very motivating. However, when you're in a guild that does not have that or does not have the strength and you, you can have the numbers. I know plenty of hundred man guilds that, you know, have the numbers, but they don't have the gear score to win. So, and not, not to mention the experience as well. So when you're in one of these like lower tier guilds that don't have the experience, don't have the skill or the, even the team composition, this is unfeasible. You're not going to win. You're just not, especially if you go to, you know, Calpheon because Calpheon is uncapped siege, which means that if you go here, you're legitimately going to just get railed by, you know, any guild that has gear and experience. You're just going to get ran over. Now, Medaya and Valencia, these are cap siege. So this is where you could take your guild that's, you know, lower tier and have a chance however on console at least on the na side of things it's usually monopolized i've gone over this before and i don't really want to go into this long-winded explanation again but there's the sacred and flow alliance they butt heads with each other and it's pretty much just a zerg fest uh whoever is not on the node will usually get zerged out and then we take it and then vice versa for them whoever's not on the node they will zerg out and then take it it's just whoever snakes who that's kind of how it works. There's no real fights. There's really never a good fight. I think last Saturday was the first real fight in a good minute for Sacred. They dropped on Valencia to try and take it. Sacred loss. 
is what it is and vice versa happens like every other week sometimes they'll drop on Calpheon and then they will win and then it just goes back and forth like it's only every now and then that they will fight each other usually but very rarely is it intentional and it's normally just setup fights or just alliance v alliance type thing uh, in the sense of like for example uh, electric and grave dad are in the alliance together the sacred alliance so normally we'll end up fighting each other on you know medaya and then we'll just kind of like okay we're done you guys can take castle that's usually how it goes it's a really lame way to run siege and it's very boring to a lot of players so it sucks now mind you i busted my ass to get 660 gear score and this is my end game content right here for pvp i get shafted into this fucking shitty like siege that everyone is a, it's a setup it's all fake it's all orchestrated and it's just bullshit if you're not in either alliance get fucked because you are not allowed to participate in anything because both of them will run you over meaning that you either conform to the guilds or else you get absolutely destroyed by them so it sucks if you're not in any either alliance that's just how it works and that is the end game pvp that's the end game so this right here end game Keep that in mind the next form of pvp we have rbf which we recently got back after having it removed for about five months absolutely aids and uh, i don't know if you noticed but uh it's not exactly fucking popping here <laughs> we've only got two rbfs filled and it's literally uh, seven people in one rbf and six in another so we're not exactly uh pumping the numbers in the rbf real talk so it is what it is but this is again another form of pvp now i will say this one and siege are the only ones that yield a decent reward and when i say decent i'm being rather generous because the rbf rewards are pretty trash you get some silver and then you get some ancient dust that you can turn into kafras that's about the highlight of rbf i think those rewards are genuinely trash because for pvp players if they don't want to grind they should be able to buy and gear up through it by a PVP. You know what I'm saying? That's genuinely how it should be. So RBF should yield a lot more silver and a lot more Kafras or whatever. Whatever that would make the money per hour worthwhile. Because realistically, it is trash and it's almost borderline not worth doing outside of just your board. So with that being said, RBF Siege being the only thing that kind of pays you to at least play the content one is borderline unworth it and the other one is super hard to get into because you have to join a guild that's in one of the alliances and if you don't then you basically can't even get your foot in the door so there you go one's gate kept and one's fucking worthless and the other form of pvp we have gvgs which yields actually no rewards it is just a way to do open world pvp without any kind of uh, karma loss that's all it is there is no reward to it there is no fun in it. There is nothing. That's why I sit on protection 24 seven because I'm not going to participate in something that does not pay me. Like I, I do not get paid to get griefed. I do not get paid to go grief. So therefore I'm not going to participate in it. It is fucking worthless and a waste of time. And I genuinely don't care to be a part of it whatsoever. So it is what it is. This shit sucks. And um, I don't know how to make it better. But it's just something to do in the game, really. It's just a, a, an in-game system that you can utilize. That's about as far as it goes. And the only other, I guess, kind of form of PvP is Arsha. This is a server that you can go into that yields a 50% uh, grind buff. So, meaning that your drop rate is increased by 50%, which is actually very, very nice. However, um, we don't have the pause loot scroll function on console, so... Whenever someone rolls up into your grind spot, the issue is that like everybody just kind of like, you know, you, you get griefed, your scroll gets wasted and it's a wrap. It's really shitty because if the, at least we had the, the pause loot scroll function, this wouldn't be so bad because then I'd have no problem pausing my loot scroll, fighting for like maybe 10, 20 minutes and then just going back to the grinding with, you know, not wasting my loot scroll. But because it doesn't exist on console, it's almost never worth it to grind on Arsha because you're you're going to be fighting more than grinding. So like, what's the point? And really, even if you could pause your loot scroll, you're still losing time. You're still elongating. If some guy griefs you for 20 minutes, that's still 20 minutes of your life that you're fucking losing that you have to now put into the scroll that you could have already been through on a different server. So either which way, it's still not that worth. And that pretty much covers all PvP content. That is really it. It's really shitty. I'm not going to lie. When PvPers are complaining about there, there's a lack of content, they are not wrong. There really is a lack of content. There are only two things that pay you and one of them is so shitty and the other one is basically fake news. So what's the point? 
Like, PvP is actually useless on console as of right now. Now, let's kind of take a look at PvE for a minute. Now, I know a lot of people in PvE are complaining that there's a lack of content, but I'm not gonna lie to you guys. You kind of have a lot more content. First of all, this game's PvE is essentially grinding. Meaning, you go to a spot, you grind for X amount of time, and you make a lot of money in order to buy gear and progress yourself so you can grind higher and better areas or to participate in PvP. Either which way, this game is ran by one thing and one thing only. Silver. The more silver you have, the more of an easier time you are going to have. That's how the game works at the moment. Now, you can argue that this needs to change, but it, it hasn't, so you're going to kind of have to accept it for what it is. Now, when it comes to content for PvE, this entire region right here, all of this desert, is basically worth it. There is not a single bad spot here except for this shithole. Never come here. This is the worst spot in the entire game. Just don't- I would rather grind grass beetles than come here, alright? This place sucks. But aside from that area, almost everything else here is totally reasonable and grindable and you can make 150 to 200, even upwards of 300 million silver per hour. So that's a lot of money. Now, mind you, a lot of these, you know, gamers out here, you know, we're out here playing Elden Ring, okay? Do you know what people do in Elden Ring? I see people telling me all the time, like, come play Elden Ring, come play Elden Ring. It's so fun. It's, it, you know, it's new, it's fresh. And I, I, all I see, all I see every single one of my friends doing, they're just grinding runes. They're just grinding fucking runes. All they're doing is using some shitty cheese strat and then they are just farming runes. You know, you know what that is? That's farming silver and BDO, hitting the same fucking mobs for an hour only to get a certain monetary value to raise whatever it is your goal is. That's that's the game. So when everyone tells me to come play Elden fucking Ring and then they're sitting there doing the same thing that they've been doing in BDO for about seven years now, I just laugh because they don't even realize that they are actually just playing the same fucking game with just a new coat of paint. Sure, there's bosses, it's very difficult and whatnot, and the PvP is not super large scale or anything like that, but regardless, you're still doing the same thing. You're still hitting mobs for X amount of time for X amount of monetary value. Same fucking thing. So when I hear people crying for like new content and then they, they, they use this example of Elden Ring has this, Elden Ring has that, it's like, does it? You do the same shit. You do the same thing. Not all video games are clearly in the same department, right? However, it's still like there are mechanics built around the same thing. Hell, even in Dying Light 2, there's the, there's the same mechanic in that as well. You have to grind up XP in order to level up your character. Yeah, and there's like multiple cheese strats. Like you can do a shitty fucking like jump mechanic where you can just cheese it over and over and over. So that way you can max your jumping skill as fast as possible. So you do it for like 45 minutes to an hour to max out your skill. It's again, you're still farming. You're still grinding for some kind of value to your goal. And the same thing for like character XP. You grind mobs in order to get XP to raise your character level. It's literally, there's multiple games that have this mechanic and people complain about it. it. It's insane to me. The only argument to it is that, well, uh, it doesn't take as long. It doesn't matter. It's still fucking there. It's the same thing. Just because it doesn't take as long, that doesn't, that doesn't mean anything. That just means you're going to finish the game faster and have nothing to do. There you go. So back to this right here, okay? So this entire area, PvE content, pretty much. You can grind anywhere here, make hella money, okay? This area sucks fucking dick. Rework this shit. It's fucking garbage. Everything here is terrible. This area, everything's terrible. Rework this shit, okay? Over here, everything here is terrible. Rework this shit. Uh, everything in this area, terrible. Rework this shit. We don't have it on console. I know it's reworked, but just we don't have, we don't have it, okay? So like pretty much everything here and here we don't have available on console that is reworked. So I'm just merely saying, you know, rework this shit for us, please. So we can actually have more PVE and people can shut up about it. But the point being, this shit sucks. So the next thing, this place, very good, very good money. Uh, it's a little RNG based, but if you can get the right, you know, drops and everything, you can actually make a lot of money here upwards of like 200 mil an hour. And assuming you get a drop, you can progress that to like 600 mil an hour if you're lucky. Next place, we have Sakraya, my home. I grind here all the time. I make about 300 to 400 mil of silver an hour, and it's very, very good. Another, this is end game though. This is the highest spot in the game that we have at the moment, and I grind here all the fucking time. Um, so again, we, there is a lot of PVE content. It's just the same mechanic, run around, hit the mobs, make money just in different areas. So 
you have to think about it. What more do you want out of this? And I know what more you guys want. You guys want dungeons. You guys want dungeons to do with your friends and more group content. And I agree. There needs to be more group content and better dungeons and better rewards. Ataraxian and Sakrakia are actually not terrible in terms of like just ideas, right? However, the rewards are trash. BDO is too afraid to step out of their formula of just grind mobs for X amount of hours. They are so scared to try something different that may or may not succeed. And 100%, it will fucking succeed. But either which way, the dungeons that we have in BDO are pretty dog shit. The rewards are terrible. The effort that you're putting in for that reward is terrible. It's really just down bad. So in that aspect, it's pretty, it's pretty trash. It's pretty trash. Not only that, but I mean, realistically, what's the worst thing that can happen if you do put in dungeons? Everyone stops fucking grinding and just does dungeons all day. Is that really such a bad thing? Like, it, let's be realistic. Unless like you make the dungeons broken to the point where they're making, oh, I'm making 7 billion silver an hour or something like that. Unless you do that, then obviously you need to fix some shit. But as long as you make the dungeons repeatable, and you do like let's say let's let's say for example right whenever you get to a safe point in the game uh and development wise to where you can come out with let's say six dungeons okay you come up with six dungeons different mechanics different ideas that is good you can do those dungeons and repeat them every single time however make the rewards worthwhile and rotate the rewards weekly one week is a tongue ring next week is a disto oops i hit the microphone uh next week let's say a tongue belt uh, next week, Ominous Ring. Next week, Turos Belt. And, you know, one week, Debereka. Either which way. That's not a horrible idea on paper. It gives an alternative to grinding. Not only that, it's repeatable. Now, you might be wondering, well, if that's the case, then wouldn't the items just be dropped down in price? You don't have to make the fucking items, like, super fucking, like, high drop rate. Like, it doesn't mean you could keep it the same drop rate as whatever. As long as you put other rewards in there like uh you know let's say mobs or something that drop kafras or along with the um with the debareko or like whatever the item is for the week you could also put you know kafras in there you could put um let's say like horse mats in there for dream horses uh, you could do uh, many different things that are actually worthwhile and worth money not to mention you could still do trash loot in there as well it it's very very feasible Especially if you put like strong mobs in there, you can up the trash loot to like maybe 200k and you put like maybe like 60 mobs in there or something. I'm just saying there are many ways that you can make a dungeon equate to an hour worth of grinding. You know, th there's many ways you could do that. So maybe like, for example, you do Ataraxia and the rewards will yield about, you know, let's say, um, mm, let's say they yield about 30 million an hour or like not an hour but per run right but it takes you x amount of time so you'd have to do three runs in order to make about 150 mil an hour that would be something to do that's something good it's pve content it's a dungeon and it's still something that's grindable it's just a different type of grind not to mention you can do it with your friends so therefore it's more palatable and you can talk with your buddies while you're grinding it's much better to keep the player base engaged and with each other than having everyone play by themselves. I'm spitballing, of course. My ideas are not perfect, but I'm merely saying that is the possibilities are there. It's like the same thing with RBF, right? If you do RBF and you win every so amount of times, right, per hour, you're making this much money per hour with RBF because it, I think what it yields like 15 or 16 million per win. I don't know if they buffed it, but that's what it was previously. So it's like 16 million an hour, right? Or 16 million per uh, RBF. I think every RBF runs for about uh, like 20 minutes, I think, something like that. So if you were to run, let's say, about three RBFs, you'd be making about 50 million an hour. So if you raise that price to about 150, so and make the rewards like, let's say, 50 mil, that would be something good. So now we're pumping up the numbers here. We do 50 times three because, you know, it's 20 minutes, so 20, 40, 60. And then, you know, that's three. So we times that by three, 50 million, right? 150 million per hour if you win your rbfs if you win if you lose you get about like 130 115 something like that so still worth still worthwhile either which way you can do something similar with like ataraxian or sacrakia put some drops in there put some you know trash loot in there that's going to equate to some decent money and then make it all lootable for the party 
and then you run it about three four times in an hour and you make like 200 mil or something like that alternative good grind fun mechanics uh for the dungeon and it's something for pve to do or pve ears to do i should say god this video is going on way too fucking long now i'm not gonna lie to you boys all right we need to talk about life skilling for a second because i think that this is something that most people kind of overlook and i think not a lot of people are participating in anymore just because like they just feel like it's just kind of outdated it's boring uh and i agree it, it really is some uh, certain ones are outdated and boring but I'm gonna keep it real. Most life skills are kind of like passive income type things. There's only very few that you can do that actually will yield good money per hour or like at a large portion of the time. I won't go into the specifics because like I don't want to like fuck anyone's market, but I'm just gonna kind of go over like the ones here that in my opinion I think are worthwhile. So for example, we have gathering, okay? We've got different types of gathering. So gathering is a broad term and it's used for multiple things. You've got lumbering, which is aka chopping wood fluid collecting which is blood collecting or like sap collecting i think as well then you've got hoe gathering which is you know herbs and stuff that's something that you can do this one is probably like the least that you make any kind of money with it's really not good uh then you've got butchering which is probably the most profitable which is like you know chopping up meat and stuff killing wolves getting wolf meat bear meat etc then you've got tanning which is pretty dog shit as well this one's actually probably the worst in terms of money but then again i don't dabble in it and i'm pretty sure there's like some secret trick to it but i won't talk about it anyway mining again not really that profitable but there is a market for it to some degree but again eh. and then you have water scooping which uh yeah we're just gonna talk about that so out of all of these here for gathering butchering is the most profitable then fluid collecting then i'd probably say lumbering and then I would probably say mining and then everything else is mediocre. Now for processing, this depends on what you're using things for. Uh, processing is kind of like you're mixing and matching mats in order to actually make something for another life skilling. So for example, right here, I'm doing wood chopping right now because I want to make some uh, pl plywood and then I want to make planks so that way I can make crates for later. And that's kind of what I'm doing right now so that way I can use it for my trading skill. So even though processing doesn't directly net me money from processing directly, I'm going to be using it for trading on my shy. So processing is usually kind of like a means to the end. You kind of do everything through processing and then whatever you process will be used for a separate life skilling. Like shaking can be used for a majority of like cooking things like for creating flour, I think is what it is. I'm not really sure if it's actually shaking. It's something used for either of that, but one way or another. Uh, most of these life skills can be used through, you know, as recipes like fishing uh, or drying. You can get a drying yard and dry fish out for you, or you can do it yourself. If you fish all night or all day, whatever, and you want to dry the fish, use it for cooking. That's an option. And then you have literal fishing, which is pretty terrible. Honestly, fishing is really garbage. It's outdated as fuck. It's very low income. And there's really no way to kind of make it worth any, any kind of time effort. It's just an AFK skill that people use while they sleep that's all it is it's really trash hunting has been down bad for a good minute nobody really does it anymore there is going to be a buff later on there's going to be a whole life skilling buff actually coming hopefully soon but till then it's pretty trash cooking is high money but it takes time to set up and get things working and once you do though you can cook a lot of good meals especially use it for trading as well so that way you can turn it in for crates and make some decent money out of that or you can sell the meals on the market like you can cook up cron meals uh you can you know cook up the balanos meals or whatever that you can put on the market so that way people can buy them for their own crates so there are, it, it depends on the market and, and the volatility of the market but it, it's all up there you know for interpretation of how much money you can make depending on your market and then alchemy is big money i won't really talk about it because again marketplace i don't want to fuck anything up but alchemy is good you just got to know what, where to look for it horse training is okay it's complicated there's a there's a lot of things i don't want to talk about it because i again i don't know anything about horse training i just know that you catch a horse train it sell it and then if it's a good horse you can turn it into a corsair and that's or corsair I, people get mad corsair corsair who gives a shit either which way it can be big money but it depends on how you go about it and i don't do it so i'm not going to bother to talk about it trading can be big money but there's going to be a buff coming later on so this is good money too but mediocre at the moment it's used kind of like processing a means to an end. You're usually farming a product to use for cooking or alchemy. It's 
kind of how it works. It's not really something that's going to net you a whole lot of money just by on its own. Sailing, I don't think nets you really any money. I think this is just like used like as a life skill for like you sail the boat faster, you get skills that make your trips a lot quicker when you're bartering. So again, this is a means to an end to a different skill. So sailing, bartering go hand in hand. And as for bartering, this can be big money, but you have to be high level and know what to do with it. And I don't, so I'm not going to talk about it. Now, just in the PVE section alone, I've talked about a fuck ton of things. I've talked about the grind spots. I've talked about life skilling. There's clearly a lot of content in PVE, but the problem with it is that it doesn't nearly uh, have much diversity. Unlike PVP, it suffers from a different issue. PVP suffers from there actually is no content. There are only two things that yield money and one's terrible. So what the fuck? Meanwhile, PvE, there's not a lot of diversity in the content. There's a shit ton of grind spots, but it's, it's the same thing. You're just running around grinding mobs is what it is. And some people will make the argument, you know, like the whole Elden Ring argument that like, well, it's a nice, it's new game, it's whatever, but you're doing the same fucking shit, farming runes in there. So really, what are we talking about here? And then we just went over life skilling, and this is pretty diverse to some degree. However, the money payout for it is not that great. You have to have really high life skilling to make any kind of money. Like cooking, you gotta be at least be guru something to make any kind of real money in cooking. Same thing for alchemy. You gotta be at least artisan to master and upwards of even guru to make any real money out of it. Not only that, it's not even factoring gear. You have to have at least like full tetlogia, getting into Jernoa and Manos just to make any real money off of it as well. And even when you do, there are only specific life skills that are going to yield a shit ton of money. Like fishing, for example, no money. But alchemy, big money. I made billions with alchemy. I made no money with fishing. And there's also the time sink into life skilling as well, which is kind of like the chill part about it. But there's a lot of setup that goes into it. In order to make billions with alchemy, you have to have a lot of setup, which means you have to have nodes properly set up. You have to go out and manually gather blood, for example, to get, you know, other types of bloods. So it, there's a lot of setup that goes into it. And sometimes the payout cannot be so good depending on your market. Like right now, the market is very, very good for alchemy on NA servers for console. However, like in six weeks, it could not be good. It's it, it depends on the volatility. So if you, you know, dump all your eggs in one basket, it, you could literally get fucked within a few weeks. So it's kind of like you have to dabble into everything and can be a little and be a little overwhelming. So I think life skillers kind of have it the best, in my opinion, in terms of content. But the problem is, I think they deserve a little bit of a more of a payout, like for butchering, for example. I think that should probably like get a bit more of a payout. I think it yields the most money per hour in the sense of like similar to grinding but I think it should still be a little bit more. And when it comes to like cooking, fishing, hunting, all these other things, I think these also could use somewhat of a buff as well. But some people would probably say, oh, cooking, you can make a shit ton of money. It's like, yeah, but you're not, I, I don't think you're making like insane amounts of money. I really don't. It's just not that crazy. Like you can make like 200 mil, like starting the day off. If you do like guru boxes and stuff like that, that's big money. But again, that involves a lot of a setup, a lot of things. And some people just don't want to do that massive setup. Some people just want to do like a chill gather grind is what I'm talking about. So at the end of the day, here, here's here's how it is. PVEers, I think you guys have a lot of content. I think you do. I genuinely think you do. However, it's not very diverse. There's not a lot of dungeons. There's not there's really no dungeons at all because they're not worth doing. So I think that group content needs to be added for diversity so that way the people can actually enjoy playing with their friends and have a good time. I think there needs to be instanced group content so that way there's no griefing that goes on and people can actually just play the game in peace and actually have fun. That would bring a more casual player base into there and that would also inflate numbers and also look really good for, you know, the books for the investors. So not a bad idea to keep the casual base happy by creating some form of instance PVE. Not only that, but we are very far behind in PVE content just as a whole. Like we, we are just now getting Odalita on the 30th. Hopefully that really does go through. So overall, I think PVE is in a better spot than PVP, considering that, like I said 40,000 times today, there is two things that pay you in for PVP, RBF and shitty siege. Both of them are in a state of just virtual unlike worthiness of a player's time. If you want to talk about like a game not respecting your time as a player, PvP in this game does not respect your time. It's all garbage. So I think the PvPers are right to some degree that there needs to be some kind of fix to the game so that way PvP can be worthwhile because as it stands, 
it is one of the worst situations in PvP history. It's worthless. But again, I'm not forgetting about the PvEers. There definitely needs to be content done for that as well. But I think you guys need to realize that you're a little bit better off than uh, most things. So just saying. Anyway, uh, that's going to be it for today's video. I apologize that it was super fucking long, but... I, I, you know, it's like five in the morning, dude. Like I'm, I'm struggling here. Okay. But that's it. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.